Welcome to VaderBox. I'm Bambi Francisco, and with me, as always, is Ezra Royzen. He's a VaderBox regular and our guest host for today, Esther Dyson, a web luminary, someone I've known for a long time and definitely looked up to. And um, I'm really excited that you're on the show today. We should actually call it the show, um, Esther, Would You Invest in These Companies? So we are going like, to take a look at a, at a couple of companies, and um, we're going to ask you, Esther, specifically if these are companies that you would be interested in investing in and why. So um, Ezra, what's the theme for the day? Today is things you see on a monitor. How unique. <laughs> <laughs> these are comic relief. That was our theme. So that's the theme. Yeah. Things that you see on a monitor. Okay, we're going to start with... Um, we're going to start with Care Flash. This is this is a hilarious video um, pitch, very original, um, but pretty cool company. So let's start with the pitch. Yeah, Care Flash. C to the A to the R to the E. Care Flash makes it great for your friends and family. F to the L to the A-S-H. Care Flash keep your friends and your family up to date. 3D animations will help you understand, understand your medical condition. Just take it from the man. man. For real, y'all. Hundreds of high-definition 3D animations narrated in all kinds of languages. You say, what about Dutch? Oh, yeah. We got that, too. See what's really going on, y'all. I help calendar. I like the pitch. The pitch is great. <laughs> I think that they they don't, I mean, as an entertaining, engaging marketing tool yeah. for the company, it's funny. Yeah. It doesn't really go into a lot of detail on what the company is, which is, in fact, sort of a, a half Google Groups, half WebMD content site, where mm -hmm. you can basically learn about what's going on uh, in a case or in a... In a know, disease. In a disease, what yeah. someone, someone you know has. Right. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then you can basically create a group of people who are concerned about that person or in a corporate setting, and you can essentially communicate with those folks, say, here's what's happening, here's, here's what's going on with Uncle Larry. Or Steve and, Jobs. Or Steve Jobs, a larger group. Yeah. Uh, and, Bunch uh, of nervous investors. Nervous investors, and you can basically communicate with them and say, come and learn about the problem, and also send well wishes, send sure. gifts, whatever. Sure. It's one video. It's just to capture the audience. It's not really about what they do. I'm yeah. sure if they um, later on they do actually explain what they do a little bit. But and let's just talk about the novelty of the business. I mean, Esther, you're in. Um, I'm in patients in like me of, actually, which <laughs> is uh, so. You know, first of all, disclosure uh, to some extent it's competitive. Though patients like me is really more for the patients and for uh, for them to communicate with other patients rather than with kind of nervous relatives or whatever mm -hmm. but uh, so I assume that the business model here is advertising or what is it I think it's sort of I'm premium so they do some basic services and there's premium models and, right. and I also think and is there like a gift registry for you know I'm blankets sure or, yeah, yeah. I think commerce. that would be is that, is that what yeah. patients because yeah. that's no like patients like me doesn't it's I mean but we're talking about care yeah. flash. Patients like me is more medical data, and okay. they, they actually make money selling data to pharma's, mm -hmm. not consumer marketing data. But this is what happens to people with the disease, and this is how they react to bit different therapies. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is almost like an event. Uh, you have wedding registries, and mm -hmm. there's a huge business like the knot. So this is kind of like the knot for a disease event. In a way, I mean, I think it's, it's a knot, and it's around the community, around keeping people informed, the calendar of care. How do you really create, sort of use the web to coordinate communication, coordinate care, coordinate scheduling, coordinate sort of communication? So, so is the doctor on? I don't think the doctor's on. I think it's okay. more for the patient out to their family. Or so the like caregiver. I'm on chemo next week, so that's the week not to call me? Or yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm on chemo next week. Or I just had chemo, and here's a group email to everyone. Also, here's what I want from the knot, right. but not the knot. Yeah. The, uh, not but the idea, the idea is good. I mean, we're going sort of the, it again, is, it's yeah. another nichification of the web. It's a nice way to be able to tap into another group of people who may be interested in your ailment and your health issue, yeah. who can right. help you, sort of like a... Well, I mean, it's almost like giving people uh, tools for etiquette. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, to some extent, we don't know how to behave anymore. What do you do when someone's getting married? Well, you get them a gift and you show up at the wedding. What do you do when they're sick? Well, you 
go on a care flash and figure you out. You find out what the appropriate thing to do is. It's like a social status thing. You know, they're on someone's care flash, they're not on someone's care flash, they're not really that close. You know, do you, do well, you invite all your relatives or not? You I know, just went through this situation with my father who just had a kidney transplant, yeah. and we had emails back and forth, back and forth. And we just did this on email. But I think something, you take yeah. something like that and put it in a site where you can open up the forum or maybe get resources from, you know, find relevant information about kidney transplant. And, and, and make it less scary. Other people have been through this. It's kind of, there's a yeah, process. Yeah, and there's other people who could actually, you know, what he didn't, what he wasn't able to do was reach out to anyone who had actually had a kidney transplant unless they got into uh. our new email. Um, but in that, and what you're saying is that if it were in a, a site like, Care flash if that conversation were on there, maybe there would be other people who could come yeah. on and say, you know, it's okay. It's okay to be on dialysis for more than six years. Well, daily strength and patients like me for some specific diseases. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a bunch of the disease group companies, they call them. This one is more, it's got a slightly different angle. And, and I think they're both useful. Yeah, okay. I think three, just three, three quick thoughts I had on that. Okay. One, Really high CPMs in the health category, so like premium, premium, ultra premium yeah. Area yeah. content, so you can get, there is good revenue of all areas, it's one of the better, really, really best ones. Good point. Um, second thing is... Though you have to be careful because the farmers are terrified that their ad is going to appear next to something that says, oh, I use such and such a drug and right. my temperature went up, because then... It's a reportable event for the FDA. If oh, they, interesting. Yeah, so they, they, it's they even worse. UGC yeah, stuff. it's even yeah. worse than people not liking to be next to some girl doing something stupid on MySpace. Yeah. I, you know, I like, to, you know. Anyway, so the uh, no, that's good. That's a great point. So, but it, caveats aside, it's a it's a good um, it's a good category. The other thing is I, what I like about what they're doing um, directly is they're like you said sort of contextualization of the internet. I think that's great. On the, on the, on the downside, you got to get distribution. I mean, you got to, they got to get people coming to the right. site in pretty large number because right. it's not something that's without a huge amount of volume yeah. is going to make a lot of money. So that's true. What would make you invest in this company? Well, I mean, number one, the usual meeting, meeting the people who run it and just having a sense well, that he looks they good knew it. I'm just kidding. That's not him. <laughs> no, no, I, I thought she was the Jay. CEO. Yeah. Uh, you're so old fashioned. Yeah. Uh, and then the second is under, under, the distribution, depending on how it works exactly, I'd go and get a pharma to sponsor it and use them as sort of the marketing vehicle. I think mm. the, the business model for many of these things needs to change from just stick ads in to get someone to sponsor it and, and convene a conversation that's relevant. Mm -hmm. And again, it's probably not going to be somebody advertising a specific drug, but a, a pharma doing a kind of corporate thing or... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, who knows? Maybe somebody Which with clean access. Actually, can I actually think that there's that a great ad spot here for 23andMe. I think you're involved with that company. Yeah, but yeah. you could be like, don't end up like Uncle Joe. <laughs> Get checked uh, now. Yeah, but don't you see, be this guy. <laughs> that is pre precisely the point. You, yeah. The problem is it's so hard to have a sense of humor around yeah. medical stuff. Yeah. Because for, for a lot of people, it's... it's it is. It's okay, maybe not that but specific, but yeah. yeah. maybe no. said better. Don't right. end up like Uncle yeah. Joe said. We have to, okay, guess way. what right. time is it? It's All time right. for the Liquid Scenarios Minute. So, Esther, we're going to have you, uh, we're not going to put it on just yet, but um, this is the time we look at valuations and exit strategies, and most importantly, when founders do or don't make money. Here we are generating an initial model by searching for CareFlash in the new Vader TV API. According to the company's CEO, the post-money valuation was $2.9 million, implying a pre-money value of $2 million. CareFlash may be positioned for its first round of venture financing, and Liquid Scenarios estimates that CareFlash's Series A VC round will be in the range of $2 to $3 million, with a pre-money valuation of 4 to 6 Ultimately, the sale of the company may be a function of how quickly CareFlash can grow its penetration of the large supply of Fortune 500 companies with headquarters in the Houston area into users, page views, and email messages delivered on its platform. CareFlash's founder has a long history in the Houston market and with both large companies and startups. If those factors and the A round proceeds could be converted into a reasonable penetration of the local market, 
which has a GDP larger than the country of Austria. An exit of $30 million would still be needed to give the new Series A shareholders a 5x return, with founders walking away with nearly $10 million. That's the Liquid Scenarios Minute. Okay. It should really be that easy. Yeah. That's, yeah, it should be that easy. But um, it's always, you always have nice scenarios. Liquid Scenarios always comes up with a nice, yeah. The yeah. best case scenarios. Maybe we should call it that. But any comments on that? I think that they will. I think they're they're also going to do the corporate market thing. So maybe they can get some faster adoption that way. Working through sort of the wellness groups and corporations. I do think what I agree with what you said in Liquid Scenarios Minute is that it's about it's a function of adoption at this point more than anything else. They have to show people want to participate in this thing. And most valuations in early stage companies are driven by consumption not by commercialization. So they have to drive consumption to get people actually using and seeing value okay. from it. Okay, great point. Okay, next one, next uh, company is called Yapta. And this is like a online travel site, personalized travel concierge. Let's take a look at the pitch. Tom, thanks for uh, coming and giving us your pitch. Thanks, Ezra. Uh, I'm Tom Romery, the co-founder and CEO of Yapta, which is an online travel planning service based in Seattle, Washington and it stands for your amazing personal travel assistant. And I'm sure for those of you who travel frequently, like I do, and plan your own travel online, there probably are times where you would like to have your own personal travel assistant because, as we all know, if you travel a lot, eventually you run into quite a bit of friction. Uh, I was vice president of marketing at Alaska Airlines uh, before starting Yapta, and that was really the inspiration. I heard a lot of stories from frustrated frequent travelers who weren't only frustrated in, in the, some of the things that, that we were doing at Alaska that made them angry, but... Okay. Um, I didn't know that's what it stood for. So, but, um, but, but good. I mean, Tom, I talked to Tom on the phone. I introduced him in that pitch. Um, he's a you know, really sharp guy. He knows the travel category. He knows um, he worked in Alaska. He did other things, basically, in sort of consumer facing travel services. So, I mean, he knows things sort of how to think at scale and large scale and about the problems. Uh -huh. uh, uh, for me, they have a great hook, which is you, I think you pay a little money and it, it, it turns out that if you buy a ticket at $1,000 and when the flight takes off, that X same ticket was actually valued based on the yield algorithms at $500, you end up, you actually owed money so by the airlines. Mm -hmm. So most people don't know that. Most of that money just gets washed out. If you use their service and you buy through them and pay a little $10 or $15 or something, I think it is, you get yeah. a rebate back, mm -hmm. which is a nice little insurance, a hedge on your... Sure. A hedge on your ticket. That's a gimmick. How many people will use it? I think the, the, the utility of these sites goes up dramatically with the complexity of the trip. So if you're just flying to LA, you, you buy go to Southwest and buy a ticket and you're done. If yeah. you have a 19 stop trip with 30 hotels and lots of other complicated things and they can figure it out, great. I think it goes down dramatically if the trip's not that complicated. Yeah, I don't really see, I mean, if all they do is help you get your refund. Oh, it's just I their gimmick. It's one of their gimmicks. Okay, so because the real problem with travel today isn't even the money. It's the getting bumped. It's your flight got canceled. You can't make a connection. Right. And so to me, it smacks of just yet another travel booking site with a gimmick, but that's not really solving the real problem. The, the problem with travel right now is getting it's getting so cheap that they're not delivering because right. they can't afford to deliver. Mm -hmm. So I... Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I mean, I, I sort of use the site, but I was talking to you about this earlier. To me, that's not even the problem with travel sites is that I just want to have a travel site with all the information. Yeah. So um, I go to kayak. I'll go if they have the most, or sidestep, I guess, is the yeah. other one. I mean, if they, the only reason it's relevant to me or useful to me is if they have if they can give me access to all the different flights. Because at the end of the day, it's not $100 or $50 or rebate. It's, do you, can you get, tell me what all, what's available out there from all the airlines? Yeah. And I'm not even talking yeah. about the experience of just traveling, which is probably I mean, that's what you're talking I think, about. I think there's a lot of interesting stuff happening in travel. We had a company, I forget the name of the one that launched, that had the um, sort of plan your own social media around planning trips, like recommended museums and hotels. Mm -hmm. and I think there's a lot of things There's happening. Doppler, which I'm an investor in, and also TripIt, which I'm indirectly an investor in, well, or two of them. Yeah. Good. And uh, those sound like good investments. Yes. And I think I that, so. that, you know, I think there's a lot of new companies around generally the travel category. Is it travel content about what you do on the trip, or is it the efficiency of making the travel experience itself easier and more 
um, cost effective and so on. And you know, I, I, my guess is services that provide text messages and provide updates, as you said, that basically let you know what's happening while you're moving through travel experiences. There is going to be useful automation there. Yeah. And I think there will be useful aggregation there. I think GAPT is you trying to move into that category. The question is how quickly can they get a comprehensive set of services right. um, together? Do they have a mobile component? Do you know? I think that's on their. I know it's on their roadmap. I don't know where. Yeah, where that it might exactly sound. It. Okay, so um, the challenges for this company or well, the. I mean, the reality is it, it reminds me there was a Business Week article two or three years ago, and it said, in essence, there are some customers you don't want, and it is not cost effective to give good customer service to someone who paid a hundred dollars for a cross country trip. And there's, there's no service that can really hmm. change that reality because these are the customers you lose money on, which right, is right, why right. the travel business is so broken. And you can, you can make it better by putting in email alerts. You can make it a lot better by automating some of the stuff that should be automated. But there's no tool that, you know, in the end, when there's four seats left on the flight that is now going to be deluged by 90 people from the canceled flight. It's the four people who paid first class fares or are your, your mm -hmm. gold customers or whatever. They're going to get those four seats. You can't, mm -hmm. you know, YEPTA can't get you right. that. So and that's like the real would, challenge. You would invest in somebody that could solve some of those problems as well, opposed to another travel site. <laughs> yeah, but the only thing that could solve that is that the premium customer gets the better service. That's the reality of it. Mm -hmm. Right now, because the airline industry is actually underpricing its services and losing money, they're, they're underpricing a bad service. And until they price it realistically, they're not going to be able to deliver. So it's a, it's a much more systemic problem than simply automating stuff that used not to be automated. Now it's pretty automated, but it's... I think, I think that, so two points. One, I think it's a, good, there's a great point that you shouldn't serve all customers or can't serve all customers. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't think that way. Um, I think the, I once read a great article as well in the airline industry where it said it's really hard to run an experience business when you have Motel 6 walking through the Ritz Carlton, uh, when you have, if you think of people going through first class and whatever, you know, coach is, you have, it's really hard to create a consistent, uniform, yeah. pleasant experience for your high end customers while you also have to service low end customers and you can't, it's really yeah. hard to integrate. So when you have those two worlds colliding mm -hmm. in airline travel, which they do, yeah. and there are certain things you can do, there's just, you know, can't do what you're systemic about going through security and just having right. a lousy time. And also they, can't do. they can't fix the jerk sitting next to you. Yeah, they can't I mean, fix any of those The things. problem isn't the airline, it's the other passengers. Yeah, so, so all, that, you know, all of that put together, there is inefficiency and a need for a better experience. The question is, and YAPTA, so YAPTA does want to help that problem, how, how they do it, and is there a demand? I think so. But how they actually end up go about doing it, I think that's going to be a question. The new service where you can get through security faster, yes. clear, that's great. I'm all over that. Yeah. That's great. Um, that, that's a clear service. They could partner with Clear and do a, you know, a whole package kind of deal where you can go into Yapta and get the super plan for making life easier to travel, yeah. a, con a parking concierge, a travel rebate, a clear pass. Those are good suggestions. I mean, 20 right. different things that make life better for me. I'm, all, I'm on it. Yeah, but then they're going to have to charge you is the problem. Yeah, they're going to charge you. The, the thing about Clear, I just, they deserve this mention. They changed their privacy policy and they sent out an email. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you got it, you if you remember it, at yeah. the time. So it said, here's a new privacy policy. Here are the changes we made. Here's a link to the new privacy policy. Here's a link to the old privacy policy. And here's a link to a redlined copy of wow. And just from disclosure, it, yeah. it just it sent the message of clear, transparent, yeah, whatever. That's great. It was brilliant. That's great. So I think there's, there's, there are services that are doing lots of cool things in travel, but it's not a tricky problem to solve. It's probably an easy one. If you don't, you don't get it right, it's going to be tricky. Yeah. Uh, and you need a ton of traction. I mean, these are e-commerce sites yeah. that need millions and millions and millions of users to be using them all the time. So it's really because the, the market. How do they get distribution? Yeah. Really small. What's your suggestion? What do you think? Con and ask. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd love to talk to the guy and see what it is he's really trying to do because mm -hmm. it, 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 he's in the business, so he's presumably not naive about mm -hmm. how to make it better and the costs of doing that. So sure. it's it's intriguing, but I'm skeptical. Ah, yeah. Intriguing. No, he's okay. A, he's a smart guy. Sometimes I talk to him, he gets it and yeah. he gets the problem, right. and I think that they will do something. The question is how big it is.
Well, now it's time for the Liquid Scenarios Minute. It's the time when we look at valuations and exit scenarios, and most importantly, when founders do or don't make money. Liquid Scenarios estimates that Yapta's Series A pre-money valuation was around $7 million, assuming investors took around 25% with an option pool of about 15%. Most likely, Yapta will have to raise a B round, which Liquid Scenarios estimates to be in the range of around $7 million at a pre-money valuation of around $21 million. The variety of buyers in this space helps Yapta's exit prospects, as evidenced by the acquisition of Sidestep by Kayak for $180 million, which resulted in $200 million for Sidestep shareholders. Just months before that, Sidestep acquired Tripa. Interestingly enough, every part to each of these deals was venture funded. Based on those transactions, if Yapta can grow its revenue to $12 million to $20 million in the next couple of years, the new Series B investors could get a 3.5x return. The Series A investors would get close to a 10x return, and at that price, the founders would walk away with around $30 million. And that's the Liquid Scenarios Minute. Yeah, that's, a, that's the best case scenario minute. Yeah, I, think yes. it, I mean, it's a great scenario, and I think at least it shows a path for how there can be some value creation here. And mm -hmm. I think that, but the trick is going to be getting to that, that $21 million um, valuation. 12 to 12 million and 20 round. million in revenue. Yeah, it's, you got to be a pretty successful company to be worth 20, 20 million bucks. These right? days, Especially yes. these days. These you got to be pretty, you got to have a lot of users. Okay. So, so now, I know they're two different companies, but we do this at the end of every VaderBox, Yapta or CareFlash, which one would you bet on? Hmm. If they gave you back your three million dollars to go to space, yeah. here you must invest in. I, you know, company. I think I think <laughs> I would probably go with. I think they both have interesting categories. I think if it's a smaller kind of angel type earlier round investment, I like CareFlash. I think they're doing some interesting things. Good management team. I think on the Yapta side, I think these guys. If, if you looked at the numbers and they were getting traction and they had some, some real stuff happening, they know how to do big businesses, and I think that they would be a great investment, but I'd want to see you know, a little bit more of the data. Mm -hmm. If I had to do it not knowing any more than I know now, I'd probably go with CareFlash because at, at least I understand what they're trying to do, and mm -hmm. Yapta, I think, is maybe taking on a challenge that's more than they can deliver on. I agree. I think CareFlash is the one that I would bet on because I think it's a utility, it's novel, I don't I think it's useful. I would use it for sure. Um, Yapta. Hey, that's our theme, utilities. Thanks, Ezra. <laughs> it's like 20 minutes Liquidation later. of utilities. Liquidation so. of utilities. So there our you have it. CareFlash. We all three of us, we all agree. We like CareFlash. It's still small, but um, but definitely useful and novel. So, but, uh, but Yapta looks like, you know, it's in good company with a lot of companies yeah. getting bought out, so maybe that'll be an opportunity for them. Unfortunately, disease and travel problems are both inevitable. Yes. That's the theme. Thank yes. you. That's a good theme. Yeah, death, taxes. <laughs> okay. Travel and problems. And, and disease. And yeah, and leading to death. Well, Esther is just go is going to join us again for another segment of VaderBox, so, um, and you'll see that next week. So I just want to say thank you, Esther, for joining us for this week's uh, VaderBox. Ezra, as always, thanks for being here. And I've been, I'm Bambi Francisco. You've been watching Vader Box, and I'll see you next time on Vader TV.